All right, what's up, YouTube boxing family? It is K Rod 7435 here. I am back with another good video for y'all today. Uh, let's get right to it. Um, we have some uh, interesting news with uh, any possible or f uh, for any potential fights that should be coming up uh, soon. But uh, this is in the Puerto Rican boxing community, so um, huge uh, shout out to whoever had the information but i'm not too sure of like what had happened uh with like negotiations but apparently for mr edgar berlanga he will be fighting uh ronald gavriel on puerto rican day weekend uh parade right in which i'm not really a fan of that and i'm gonna basically be uh pretty pissed off talking about this you know potential matchup and, uh, I believe Xander Sias, you know, obviously, you know, but the diva himself, uh, he will be fighting on the undercard as well. So, I'm not too sure who the hell Xander is fighting. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't even show on box rec because, like, we're already pretty much, like, you know, less than, like, a, like, I would say less than a month, um, away from seeing that fight you know, going down, um, at the, uh, Madison Square Garden, so, <clears throat> oh, shit, I'm sorry, but, uh, uh, basically, for June, um, for June, um, 11th, uh, Edgar Berlanga is supposed to be, uh, headlining another main event in New York City, um, against, uh, Ronald Gavriel, and, yeah, uh, I believe that's what I'm hearing, and I think that's a very, very trash fight, and I'm definitely going to talk about it in this uh, video. And for those of you that don't know who Edgar Berlanga is, Edgar Berlanga is a heavily hyped up uh, Puerto Rican super middleweight uh, fighter. Um, he is, uh, I forget, um, like what's his record? I think he's like like 19 and and O with 16 KOs and he is ranked number 15th in the world and he is ranked number 6 in the US for uh the top you know six leading super middleweight um American fighters but he is out of um New York New York you know born out of Brooklyn uh, they call him, you know, the chosen one, 24 years old, orthodox, six foot one, 73 inch, um, arm reach. And he is, uh, yeah, um, he's pretty much a, you know, big, tall, super middleweight fighter. Um, he had his last outing with, uh, Steve Rolls where he had, uh, made his, uh, you know, secondary title or, yeah, like, you know, um, he made, like, a bullshit title defense against, uh, S Steve Rolls after he had won his, uh, uh, tough battle against Marcelo, um, Esteban Coceres, uh, that was back in the Walder Fury 3, um, undercard back in October, uh, but, <clears throat> like, um, leading into March 19th, that was his, uh, very first ever, um, main event, uh, t like, you know, type of fight that he had set up so now here we are um heading into his next fight that is um rumored to be june 11th against ronald gavriel uh for those of you that don't know who ronald gavriel is ronald gavriel was a former common common opponent to david benavides <clears throat> and um he hasn't really been in the ring for quite a long time uh, Ronald Gavriel, he hasn't really done anything, you know, um, ever since his losses to David Benavides, and I don't know what he's really been doing, like, I mean, uh, ever since his loss, uh, he was basically, you know, just fighting, like, two tomato cans back-to-back, -back, and now I'm hearing that he's gonna be fighting, uh, Diego diaz Gallardo on May 5th which I don't understand why he's doing that, because why the fuck are you fighting some 22-8, and 40-something-year-old, you know, looking fighter that looks like a fucking, like, you know, pretty much like a, 
you know, like a soccer dad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he just doesn't look like he shouldn't be fighting um, um, anymore. Uh, but, yeah, Ronald Gavriel, he's back in the mix, I guess. And they say that he's still fighting at super middleweight. And I don't understand why, because he's just not that good. You know, let's just be honest. Like, I mean... You know, you know, like, uh, Gavriel had his run for being that type of guy where he had opportunities to be good, but his whole mindset coming into boxing and his skill set just wasn't good enough, you know, at the high level. And, I mean, I will say that, you know, granted, you had two tough battles with David Benavides, and David Benavides gave him, you know, like, you know, let the work, and, I mean... I thought, you know, prior to the first fight, I, I thought Gavriel had the opportunity to beat him, but I can see why this is this was a close split decision loss because, you know, like, you know, David Benavides was winning the majority of, like, you know, um, um, of the um, rounds, but I wasn't seeing David Benavides, like, being this super ultimate badass uh, 21-year-old fighter that had fought him back, like, you know, back in the past, and... <clears throat> Ever since he had uh, beat Ronald Gavriel, uh the first time, uh, the second fight was a complete diff like a completely different fight where uh, Gavriel he just showed zero separation in the fight itself, knowing that um, he could have easily outboxed uh, David Benavides. But uh, the problem is, is that when you don't make adjustments and you are just a come forward type of fighter where all you do is just basically throw, you know, heavy ass shots and hoping that your um opponents like uh like like basically going to go down. It's like uh that does not help you win fights. So uh that's pretty much like my problem with uh yeah, with um, you know, Ronald Gavriel's style, you know, his, like you know his style just doesn't present a good enough um like you know like his style doesn't present a good enough, you know, of uh, like a good enough strategy to help him win those bigger fights. And I really have to say, like, he's, you know, very um, undisciplined with what he needs to do to get up there to become a world champion. And I don't think uh, Gavriel uh, fighting um, um, a um, Edgar Berlanga that had literally just came off of a boring ass you know, a uh, 10 round decision win over Steve Rolls uh, doesn't help you. And I just don't get it. You know, honestly, like at the end of the day, it's just like, I don't um, understand like why uh, Berlanga, like, uh, 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 ah, shit. <clears throat> I don't understand why Berlanga is uh, fighting him. I think honestly, uh, the reason why he is uh, fighting uh, Ronald Gavriel is to either prove a point that if he can knock out Ronald Gavriel, then that can show, like, you just be a past his prime Ronald Gavriel, and for some weird reason, like, that makes you, like, the best in the world, and, you know, like, I don't really believe in that, honestly, you know, like, I don't think this is a good fight for Edgar Belanga, uh, this is a trash fight, and I don't see how this really helps you as a fighter, so, I don't know, like, honestly, for me, man, it's just, you know, like, it's just sad, like, you know, uh, uh, like, I really, th like, um, I really would think that, um, Edgar would have a better mindset, uh, coming, like, you know, coming into boxing, where he wants to urge himself to fight the best, and actually be the best, but it doesn't seem like he wants to do that, because, uh, looking at the WBO super middleweight rankings, uh, there's, plenty of um fighters that Edgar Berlanga can fight out of his um like you know um 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 out of his uh division and unfortunately he's not you know picking to go that route uh the like obviously that the fights that he can go for you know at super middleweight if he really wanted to he can go after John Ryder Idos Euro Buzzanuli He's number five. Aslam Igadov, number four. Um, obviously, you know, like uh, David Lemieux is going to fight David Benavidez. And then Zach Parker, he's number one, to which he's going to fight Demetrius um, Andrade. So, 
I don't understand, like, why, you know, Berlanga would go that route. I mean, honestly, like, you know, like, if you were going to fight, like, a old veteran, I would probably say, like, a Danny Jacobs, you know, type of fight would be uh, um, a lot more um, entertaining. Um, especially, you know, for the fact that uh, Danny Jacobs, like, you know, he is a name out in New York City. And I think uh, Berlanga would have, like, a good, you know, showing um, um, against a guy like uh, Danny Jacobs. But obviously, you know, uh, knowing how top rank moves and and um, how they treat their fighters, I just don't see um, Danny Jacobs being offered um, a enough money to actually fight um, Edgar Berlanga in the city. To which I think that will be a very, very good fight down the line but i just don't see why danny jacobs is still fighting and i think honestly uh berlinga would probably very well stop him or he'll just cruise him to a decision because i don't really see danny jacobs ever being knocked out um um ever um again and i just think based off of how he fights he fights basically off of pure instinct to be in survival mode um it actually seems more like danny jacobs that's not even himself um, anymore, so, and I would probably even just say, honestly, you know, that the glitz and, gl uh, uh, the, uh, glitz and glamour, uh, had, uh, gotten to him to the past where, you know, he's not really, you know, having to be hungry anymore in boxing, and, uh, sadly, uh, that's really how things are, you know, in boxing, you know, like, once you're young and hungry and you have all these great opportunities to, try to be the best of who you are, um, you can definitely, you know, work your way up to be at the top, but, you know, like, once you, you know, start getting older, and you're, like, your body starts wearing and tearing down, uh, that's what causes you to not be hungry anymore, because the problem with boxing is that once you hit past a certain age, your body starts to be on the decline, so, I'd say that the breakoff age would be 33 to 34 years old, and that's where, you know, like, your, like, you know, like, your skill set is not deteriorated, but your body as a fighter is heavily deteriorated, and, you know, based off of how well you take care of your body, that's another problem as well, you know, for a lot of fighters, you know, like, especially when they do get older, they're not really so focused on having to you know, uh, be that type of, you know, disciplined fighter, because as you get older, you know, life, you know, like, you know, um, like eventually gets up to you. So, you know, like you're not as, uh, fully focused and, uh, dedicated, but, uh, that's why that they say, you know, when you're young, you have to do everything young. And then as you get older, you, you know, you have everything set in place. So that way you don't have to struggle to, you know, be that type of person to like, not, um, how should I say? Um, like, to not put yourself in bad positions to possibly, you know, fail. So, I think, honestly, uh, the problem is, is just that, um, for Edgar Belanga, he's not taking the risk now to be, uh, successful. And I think, uh, that's really just due to the fault of him not wanting to take the risk, you know, early in his career. And I think that's going to bite him in the future, uh, when he starts facing, like, a guy like, uh, David Morrell, or anybody from, you know, the, I guess, like, the middleweight division heading into super middleweight, like, you know, let's just say if Jaime Munguia is there, or Jamal Charlo is there, or, you know, I'll probably say Janabek, you know, he'll very well try to move up, but I don't think he's gonna do that, like, I, uh, like, I think he's gonna pussy out, and, basically keep himself there there at um 160 and claim himself to be like the new triple g but um i just think honestly just based off of how everything is basically set up with uh um like you know the uh, middleweight and super middleweight division um like i personally believe that um everybody's you know politically separated to the point where uh, nobody doesn't want to fight each other, and they're going to keep it that way until they, you know, reach up there to the high level, and then they're, like, you know, basically gonna have to, you know, fight each other when people start calling for the big fights, so, 
Um, I, I, I think honestly, the problem is, is just that, uh, um, not a lot of people want to be successful and, uh, they want to basically just, you know, hide up inside, let the shadows and, and, you know, pretend as if, you know, they, you know, they are the, um, uh, oh shit, uh, um, they try to act like that they are the greatest in the world, uh, but I don't. Uh, like, I'm um, personally, like, uh, see that, so, uh, yeah, basically for Berlanga versus, uh, Gavril, uh, this is a shit fight, I don't want to see this fight, and I think this is bad for Puerto Rican boxing, and I think this is just something where we have to heavily criticize Berlanga for being a coward and just being, like, a sucker, honestly, like, I would probably had been more interested with a opponent like a Isaiah Steen or maybe like a Tyler Howard or maybe you know um anybody that's young and hungry just like you because like the problem is is just like Berlanga knows he can fight some of these killers but it's like like you know honestly you know um he doesn't want to get tested by some you know up and coming fighter that could potentially you know take him out one day and I think that's, you know, that the biggest problem with him, he's just too, um, afraid to basically get his ass beat. And I just think, honestly, he's just going to be hyped up similar to Triple G in a way where, you know, he's just going to be like that Puerto Rican hype job. And sadly, um, um, enough, like, I just don't see him rising, um, um, as much as I don't see Xander getting up there either, which I'll talk about Xander Sias, um, I, I think he deserves, like, another video, uh, because based off of how top rank is moving him at 19 years old, eh, I'm not, I'm not really believing, it, like, in his, uh, skills and abilities, and I think, uh, you know, like, it's time for, like, you know, um, like, it's time for me to be very, um, honest, like, about it, to, you know, basically say, like, you know, these people really need to start, you know, looking through the blinders and, you know, understanding that, you know, these guys are not as good as, like, you say that they are, but, uh, the thing is, is that when I do see Berlanga, he is, like, a, like, a, a good fighter that has potential, but he's not as good as what he can be because he's absolutely just, um, how should I say, he's very, um, he's very, um, limited in the skills that he had once possessed, and he's now overlooked his skills that he once had, and he's just trying to fight a style that he's eventually gonna get, you know, defeated in, so I don't like that out of him. I would hope he can change, but sometimes you just can't change people, uh, when they don't want to be changed, so I think Berlanga, he's gonna be put in a bad position, one day, and I think, uh, that's pretty much how things are gonna go, so yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think, do you think this is a good fight for Edgar Berlanga, or do you think he should have been fighting, uh, somebody younger, just like him, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think about, um, Edgar Berlanga, and I will talk with you guys later, all right, so I, I will see you guys later, and salute to the mighty, mighty LDBC, bye.